Hi, Morgan. Hi, Amy. Guess what? What? Only ten days until we're out of lockdown. No way. Ten days. Guess what's more exciting than that? Uh... Only 33 days until Christmas. No way. Oh, or uh, almost, if not better than that. Hmm. Only 334 days until my birthday. That's quite a while off, isn't it? Don't forget it, guys, though. 334 days. Tell you what, something a little bit sooner to look forward to. In about five seconds, we are going to have a recap of the past few weeks' catechisms from Sam. Take it away, Sam. Hello, village kids. This is the recap question of what is idolatry? Idolatry is trusting in the created things instead of the creator. So, the last few weeks we've been learning about what sin is and what idolatry is. Can you remember? Maybe say along with us as we recap now. Sin is rejecting or ignoring God in the world he created not being or doing what he requires in his law. And idolatry, like we just heard, is trusting in created things rather than the creator. Now, do you think God is happy when we ignore him? Or when we trust and love people or things in our lives more than him? No, no, no. God hates sin and he cannot ignore it. So, so Emily... Why don't you tell us what this week's question and answer is? Okay, so this week's question is, will God allow our disobedience and idolatry to go unpunished? Now we're going to have a look at the first part of the answer first, and that is, no, God is righteously angry with our sin. Now, I think we need to explain that a bit more, don't we, Emily? There was a big Mm. word in there. Did you see it, guys? That word was righteously. Now, Emily, what does that mean for God to be righteously angry? It means that God is right to be angry. He's not wrong. So the Bible tells us that when God sees people sin and do the wrong things, he's right to be angry at their sin and at what they've done. Think about it. When somebody does something nasty or unkind to you, that might make you angry at what they've done. Not at the person, that wouldn't be the right thing. But angry at what they've done because you know that it's not kind and it's not nice and it's not the right thing to do. It's the same with God. Because all of our sin is against him, that makes him angry. Not at us, but at what we have done. So, what will God do about this? Well, before we give you the second part of the answer... We're going to tell you about the different people you might find in a courtroom. First, we have the suspect. Now this is someone who has been accused of doing something wrong. It might be a big thing, or it might be a small thing. But they come to the court to find out if they will be punished. Next, we have a lawyer. And this is a defence lawyer. This person's job is to defend the suspect, to try and convince the judge that the suspect has not done anything wrong. Then we have the guard. Now the guard's job is to make sure nobody escapes. He's got to do a pretty good job of keeping everyone in, making sure nobody does a runner. Next, we have another type of lawyer. This time on the other side. Their job is to convince the judge that the suspect did do something wrong. And finally, we have the judge, the most important person in the courtroom. Their job is to decide if the suspect is guilty or not guilty. Did they do wrong or not? And if they decide they did do something wrong, they need to decide what the punishment is. Now, like a courtroom with a judge, God is the judge of the whole world. And one day, 
When Jesus returns, God will look at each individual person and he must decide if they have done wrong and if they deserve a punishment. And if they have not said sorry and turned to Jesus, then sadly they will be punished and they will be separated from God forever. And that's a terrible thing. Now, if we're honest, we know that we've all done wrong things in our life. And so we all deserve the punishment from God. But, and this is very, very important, if anyone believes and trusts in Jesus, then Jesus took the punishment in our place when he died on the cross. So when God looks at us now, he's not angry with us because Jesus has died for us and taken away all of the terrible things that we've done. Isn't that amazing and Mm. so loving of God? and Jesus for being prepared to die for us. Now it might be a good idea to chat to your mum or dad a little bit more after this video if you've got any questions about that and ask them about it. Thanks Emily. Okay, let's remind you of our question this week. Here's the question. Maybe say it with me. Will God allow our disobedience and idolatry to go unpunished? And here is the answer. No. God is righteously angry with our sins and will punish them both in this life and in the life to come. Let me try that one more time. Emily, do you want to do it this time? Sure. So the question, will God allow disobedience and idolatry to go unpunished? And the answer, no. God is righteously angry with our sins and will punish them both in this life and in the life to come. Now see if you can learn that one this week, and if you do, then get your parents to send us a video on the WhatsApp. Uh, massive well done to Chloe, uh, who we know completed the comic strip last week, she showed us on Zoom, um, so massive well done for completing the task Ali sent you uh, last week. This week, we've got a different task for you. Why don't you write down, or maybe ask your mum and dad to write down for you, How this question and answer makes you feel? What would you say to God? We are right to be sad about our sin, aren't we? But we should also be grateful that God is so kind by sending Jesus for us. Now, before we finish, why don't Emily just pray for us and thank God for for what we've learned this week. Sure. Dear God, thank you so much for sending Jesus. Thank you so much that he died for us in our place so that you can forgive us for all of the bad things that we have done wrong. Amen. Amen. Okay, that's it for today. Um, Of course, we'll leave you with a song. Uh, We hope you have a good week. See you guys.